It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for... Craig and Ryan's Magic Review Show. I'm Ryland. No, yeah, he's Craig. That's correct. I'm Craig. He's Ryland. Guys, welcome back to another review show. We've had some really dodgy products that we've been looking at recently. Mine are the good ones. Actually, I've got good ones as well. Yeah, I think every single trick on this show yeah. this Why week... No, in the last few weeks, we've done some really dodgy tricks, haven't we? There's yeah. been some really bad tricks we've been oh, looking at. Oh, yours bad. Oh, my good. Yeah, but this week, everything is really good. It's got some really nice items that Should we're going to be looking at. Should we a bad trick in here? No, we shouldn't. No, no. Let's just do a week where they're all good. <laughs> so, uh, we're going we're gonna to get cracking with uh, the first trick, which trick. is one of Ryland's. And it's a new trick from Big Blind Media. Um, and we're going to have a look at that right now. Okay, so the first trick we're going to be looking at is by Big Blind Media, and it's a three-coin Clipto by Liam Montier. Um, comes with all the props needed to perform. It's a three-coin divination. Wait, does it come with a coin? No, you supply your own coins, but I mean, it comes Sharpie? with everything else. No, you don't get a Sharpie either, but I, I think they assume that you're going to have some coins lying around, and you're going to assume that you're going to have a Sharpie lying around if you're a magician. Um, so what we have here, uh, the ultimate pocket mentalism miracle. Three borrowed coins are locked in transparent plastic holders, dropped in three ungimmicked envelopes and mixed by the spectator. In a heartbeat, well, you can reveal... Yeah, in heartbeat, you can reveal the exact locations of the three coins. Self-working, yes. No magnets, yes. No markings, yes. No peaks, yes. No tech. Perform blindfolded, instant reset, use any currency. The system is foolproof, requires no sleight of hand to perform, and fits in a pocket for pint-sized miracles. Comes with everything you need. Um, I think that's pretty much truthful. When we watch the download to this, it's only a 15-minute download, and it starts with Liam doing this as a performance, a live performance to a lady. When you and I watched this, we were badly fooled, weren't we? Like he, we both looked at each other and we were like, "How did how did how did Liam do that? That that just doesn't make any sense." We couldn't figure out how it was done, and then we watched the explanation. We were like, oh, "Okay, that's clever. That's clever. It is clever, isn't it?" Yeah. Um, we're going to get Ryland to perform it for you, so you can see exactly what the routine looks like, and then when he's performed it, we'll go through what we like about the routine. I've got this, some stuff inside this bag. You've got some stuff? Yes, I've got a Sharpie. Okay. An envelope. Okay. Another envelope. Okay, it's like Christmas. Another envelope. Yes. <laughs> and some coins. Inside a frame. A penny. A penny. And a pound and a pen. No, what, why, and pence. What are these little container things? Um, It's for collectors. They collect their coins and keep their coins safe in these. Okay, why have you got them? Um, because I, I'm going to try and do something. Okay. And this is going to make it a lot harder. Really? Yes. Okay. What are we doing? So what we're going to do is you're going to have an envelope mm -hmm. and you're going to put a coin with a frame in it. Okay. And then seal it up. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Just seal it up. Okay. Then you put it down. And then, so you do the same with these. Okay. Right. In, any envelope, yeah? Yeah. And I'm going to put it. Okay. Okay. You want to mix them or something? Yeah, mix them. So I don't know which one to do. Done. Okay. Now I'm going to try and figure out which one's which. You are? Yes. This one. Yeah. Is yeah. the twenty p. That that one's the twenty p. Yes, I okay. think this one's the twenty p. This one. Okay. This one is the one pence. Okay. And then this one. Is the one pound. Well, you haven't even put one there, you just put a pound on it. Um, one pound. Okay. So I think this one's one pound. Let's There's no way you could get that. No, 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 no. Okay, so this one is the one pound. <laughs> <laughs> this one is the pence. <laughs> and this one this is 20p that's crazy 
I love that. So that was a really good performance, right? Let me ask you a couple of questions, as you're the one that learnt it and did it. First of all, is it right? Is it self-working? How easy is it? Yes, it's self-working. It's completely self-working, isn't yes. it? You can borrow the coins, can't you? Yeah, I mean, you can coins. you can literally use any coins, can't you? Yeah. So I mean, you used a, there are no markings. There are no markings on the envelopes. I think that's really important to understand. In fact, one thing that Liam talks about on the download, doesn't he, is having a stack of envelopes. Because obviously, that's the one thing you need to understand. If you do it the way that Liam explains it, which is the way that Ryland did it. Which you... is seal them. It then... only comes with three, and yeah. you need three for the trick. Yeah, so when you rip them open at the end and you've written on them, you can't do the trick again. So you were practicing it by pretending to write on there and not actually... Uh, seal I, them. I pretended to seal them up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And but then obviously when you performed it, you you actually did do it. But now you're going to need some more envelopes. Yeah. Uh, that's something to bear Can in you mind. Get envelopes, please. Yes, we've already got some envelopes like that, so that's not a problem. Um, but the thing that you need to understand is, like like I say, th there's nothing prepared about the envelopes. So Liam talks about having a big stack of envelopes and going through and just saying, look, take any three envelopes that you want to, so that people know that they're normal envelopes, which I think is a really good idea. I also like the concept of using those little coin collector cases because it means that there's no way you can feel what the, uh, you, you can't feel the coin shape. or anything like that. You can't feel the shape, you can't feel anything. It is really baffling. Now, let's be honest. It's not the most amazing trick in the world. If you were going to, you know, if you were sat in front of the most important client in the world and you wanted to perform a trick that would seal the deal for you and get you the contract, you wouldn't do it this. It would, because it would fold them completely out. <laughs> it would fool them, but the point I'm trying to make is there's tricks that are better than this. But I think this trick is awesome. What trick? I'm not going to go into it now, but there's like loads of tricks. The point I'm trying to make is this makes a real, in my opinion, this makes a really good opener to a set of mentalism or mental magic tricks. It, it, it's magic, but mentalism at the same time, it's both. It is. Well, well it depends which... It yeah, yeah, we don't want to go too much in. Goes. Exactly, there's a few different ways you can go. Um, but it's, it's very, very easy to do. And I think it makes a great opener. I do think it's very practical as well for a... A restaurant type worker because you can just have the envelopes in your pocket you can bring the envelopes out you can get them to pick three can I borrow some coins please wonderful what coins have you got yeah I'll take that one that one that one we're going to try and do something it's it's the sort of thing that you would normally use for like flux and spend a fortune on but you're doing it with totally ungimmick envelopes the the coin cases are ungimmicked the pen is ungimmicked the coins uh, are ungimmicked everything's ungimmicked and yet because of Liam's cleverness yeah, but not really. Tiny. Yeah, a tiny, tiny little thing that makes this makes the trick work. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 great. I mean, it is what you see on the tin. Like I say, it's not, in my opinion, he disagrees with me, but it's not like the most absolutely mind blowing trick of all time. But I think it's a great addition to a mentalism set, and I think that good opener, good opener, good and for stage, good for close up, good for parlor, good for walk around, good for everything. You are right, you can do this on stage really well. You can do this parlour, you can do it tables, you can do this walk around. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, you, you know what, I completely agree with you. Um, and it's super commercial, because like you said, it's an instant reset. If you don't want to carry a big stack of envelopes around with you, you can just do it with three envelopes and not have the envelope sealed, and not write on the envelopes, and that's absolutely fine. Um, they just got to remember in the head. Yeah. Um, at the end, Liam goes through a couple of other ideas that you can use with it, which is which is quite nice. I uh, can't really talk about what those are without giving the method away, but there's a couple of other additional ideas that he's got at the end of the, the end of the project. As I say, it's only a 15 minute download, but that's all it needs to be because it's very easy to do. If you're looking for something that is super easy, that's like basically self-working, that you can literally open up and do immediately and yet still have really good reactions, then this is something that you should go for. I think this is this is a great thing to carry around with you and a gig. It takes up very little pocket space. Like you said, you don't need a table. You can do it walk around and um, it's a real baffler. It's good. I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to give this 90%. What are you giving it? 100. Trick One, of the week. Trick of the week. You think this is trick of the week? Yeah. I'm thinking what else we've got. You think this is trick of the week? Yeah. I think you might be right, you know. I think you might be right. The other stuff's good as well. 
No, you know what? I'm going to go with you. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you on that. Trick of the week this week. Um, trick of the week is... What's it called again? Clipto. Clip of the week. Trick of the week. Clipto by Liam Montier. Fantastic trick. So 90% for me. What were you giving it? 100. 100% from Ryan and 90% from me. If you want a nice little self-working pocket miracle, this is something that you want to go for. So next up, we have by Twister Magic. And you know who Twister Magic is, don't you? Yeah. Uh, they did the no bullying trick. Yeah. Um, Twister Magic presents Get Money by Louis Frenchy and George Iglesias. Now, the history behind this is George Iglesias bought out through Twister Magic dollar to credit card in 1995. And it was super, super popular. Like, it's, everybody was doing it. I don't want to talk. I'm going to talk about it at the end. Okay, Not cool. what I'm going to say now. Okay, let's okay. perform. Well, yeah, I just want to say this is an updated handling of. Do you think I dollar can do it? Yeah, yeah, super easy. Yeah, no problem. Uh, this is an updated handling. In fact, I was going to suggest that we film this for a YouTube channel. But uh, yeah. this is an updated handling of dollar to credit card. Uh, but it's got like extra changes. So extra, extra, you've got, you've extra. got like. Hang well, on. you'll see. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five. five yeah, changes. there's like five changes. So it starts off with uh, money. Okay. How about I just start off with a note? Start off next note. Next note. Credit um, card. card. Yeah, exactly. We're go I'm going to perform it for you first of all, so you can have a look at exactly what it is. There are pros and cons with this product, and we'll go through that in a minute with you. But first of all, here's a full performance. Right, I'm going to tell you a, a, a dream. You know, I have weird dreams sometimes. Yes. Uh, I had a dream last night. Would you like to hear about my dream? I've got a £50 note because it involved money. Because, you see, one of the reasons I wanted to become a magician is because I thought magicians make lots of money. Because you always see magicians making coins appear and making money appear. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it'd be great if I could be a magician because then I can make money. It doesn't always work out like that because, obviously, you can make money, but it's normally tricky and you're not really making money. But I had this dream the other night, right, and I was walking down the street and I saw a £50 note on the, on the floor and I picked it up and I took that £50 note and I showed my hand empty and I turned it into a £20 note. And I thought, well, that's a bit rubbish because that's not making money. That's the opposite of making money. That's making less money. That's making less money. But then I rubbed my hand in front of it and I turned it back into a £50 note. Now, now that's moving in the right direction. But the thing is, if I could make really big money, I thought to myself in the dream, because this was a very, very, very intense dream. If I could make really big money, I'd take that, uh, that £50 note, blow, and turn it into a credit card. Of course, think about this. Oh, there you go. A credit card, you've got unlimited money. But the problem is, if there's no money in the bank, you haven't got unlimited money. So in the dream, I, uh, I did this, and I turned it into a gold American Express, which is worth as much money as you want to. And that's when the dream ended, and I woke up, and unfortunately, I didn't have a credit card. I didn't have any money. I had absolutely nothing. So there's three different versions of this, I should tell you, first of all. Uh, you've got the dollars version, the euros version, and the pounds version. And they all operate slightly differently. Well, we got... Uh, we got the pounds, obviously, because we're in England, so it makes yeah. sense to use the pounds. We've if you're in America... If you're in America, you'd use the dollars. If you're in Europe, you'd use the euros. Uh, but obviously, we have got the pound version. Now, the first thing that I want to say about this... Uh, and this is what you said to me when you first saw it, is it's not really appropriate for close-up, is it? No. The, the, if you're close-up, like I'm talking sort of mix and mingle or sort of table hopping right in a there, restaurant. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, no, it's not, it's, there. it's because the gimmick is quite Stage thick. Stage good. Yeah, the gimmick is quite thick, and George talks about how you can actually hide the thickness. However... If you are close up, I, I think that you're going to get busted with this trick. Yeah. That's you're something. Busted. That's the first thing that you need to understand because I don't want people buying this if they're close up performers and they want to buy it to show their mates down the pub or their friends at school or whatever it may be. It's not going to work very well for you. It's, it's, it's not, in my opinion, designed for extreme close up situations. <coughs> I think where this works best is in a parlor situation in a stage situation, in a kid's show, or, or 
on social media where you can control the angles. Yeah. I think all of that will work really, really well, but it is not an extreme close-up trick. Now, in terms of the actual how it's, it, it's done, it's relatively easy. It's a 45-minute download. George goes through everything step by step. There's no arts and crafts with this. It's all completely self-contained. It's ready to go out the box so that you can just follow along with George and understand how the, how the trick works. Uh, you do get additional notes. So uh, with the UK version, we got an additional £50 note and an additional £20 note so that if the gimmick breaks, um, you can make it, you can, you can fix it using these extra notes that you're given. George does say on the download that he doesn't think you're ever going to need to fix it. And I agree. Looking at the quality of the gimmick, it is really well made, isn't it? I don't think that you're ever going to have to worry about that. Um, but I mean, another example of it not being great for close-up is you look at the £50 note that it comes with and, and, and the £20 note, and it's fine if you're a little bit further away. But if you're extreme close-up, you'll be able to tell that's not a real £20 note. You'll be able to show that that's not a real £50 note. And or as I say, a real credit card. Or, or a real credit card, exactly. So, so all that in mind... Um, you have to be careful where you perform this. As I say, this is amazing for social media. I'm probably going to do this on a shorts coming up soon uh, or on TikTok. I think it'd be great for TikTok or shorts or something like that. Um, I, and as I say, if you're doing a virtual show, if you're still doing virtual shows like we are, we're still doing virtual shows. Yeah. If you're doing virtual shows, it'd be great for virtual show because you can come right up to the camera and see all the different changes and you're in control of the angles and everything. So I think that'd absolutely be fine. Uh, I think it would make a really good thing in a parlour show where you bring out uh, a £50 note and start doing the changes. I think that would work. I also think, I mentioned it before, but a kids' show, I think it would work great with a kids' show. Uh, for older kids, I think you'd have to yeah. be older kids. But with older kids, you start taking out £50 notes and turning them into £20 notes and £50 notes and credit cards. I think that's cool. Did you have something you said you wanted to say about this? Um, I think I did, but I forgot now. Oh, right. So you're just there standing there today to look pretty. You got nothing to say. <laughs> sure. Nothing to say. Just 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 nodding along and going, yeah, dad. Yeah, dad. What do you think of it? Tell me what you think. I think it's really good. You like it? Yeah. Would you want to do it on your YouTube channel? I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going to give it 95 percent. 95 percent. Yeah, I'm going to give this 90 percent. Um, I think that it's very, very good as long as you're aware that you have to be in control of the environment you're performing in in order to make the most out of this prop. Um, don't get it if you're just performing extreme close-up. It's not going to work. George might disagree with me, but having played with the gimmick, I don't think this is a close-up trick. However, I think for certain performers, this is going to be absolutely worth its weight in gold. The gimmick is very well made. It takes up no pocket space. It's relatively easy to do. The download is very, very good, and I'd highly recommend it. So there you go, 90% from me, 95% from Ryland. Let's go on to the next review. Okay, so next up we have Sukma by Na Nawa Birawa and Steve Marcello. Uh, Sukma, now apparently uh, Sukma means soul. means soul in, I think, Indonesian. So that's where that comes from. Uh, what is Sukma? Well, it is a way to peek information off a card that easily... Uh, easily that you put into an envelope. You can use an ungimmicked envelope, you put the card inside the envelope, the spectator can hold onto the envelope or you can put it away in your pocket or put it away in your wallet, whatever you want to do, but you've got access to that information. That's what it is, it's in essence a peak. And I'll do this one and you can do the next one. Yeah, that's fine. Now I'm gonna get Ryland to perform it in a minute. I'm always a little bit wary about peaks. And the reason I'm always a little bit wary about peaks is because my preferred peak of choice is the shadow wallet. I absolutely adore the shadow wallet. Shadow, shadow wallet. wallet. I, I, 1914 shadow, shadow wallet. wallet. Is that your new shadow wallet song? <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love the shadow wallet. But um, uh, so I'm always really wary when I see a new peak, especially when it's not using a What's wallet wary and it's used. Wary, I'm a little bit cautious, a little bit trepidatious, a little bit yeah. uncertain. Um, but this is a really good peak. Yeah, when I, when I started watching the download, the download's about 25 minutes long. When I started watching it, I was like, okay, this is not going to be very good at all. I was wrong. This is actually a really nice way to peak information. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Ryland to perform it for you because he's been practicing a lot. Yeah, Ryland's going to perform it and then we'll talk about the pros and the cons and what we think about it.
I've got an envelope here mm -hmm. with a card inside it. Okay. It's a card with an, like an eye sort of thing on. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to look away and I want you to write your best friend, best friend from school name on it. My best friend from school? Yeah. When you're younger. Okay. Don't look. Okay. Primary school or secondary school? Primary school. Primary school. Just the first name, in. Yeah, just the first name. Okay. Shall I show the camera? Yeah. There we go. Can the camera see, sir? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, got it. Yeah. Okay, okay. good. Yeah. Okay. And then turn it around so I can't see it when I turn it around. Nope, you can't see it. Okay. Yep. Now, so then. So, so what I'm just going to... Actually, yeah. I, want, I want you to put it in. Okay. In, in the envelope. Yeah, in the envelope. Okay, hang on. Oh, oh. There we go, yeah. Okay, now you can't see through this, yeah? No, I can't see. You can't no. see through this. Um, now, imagine that your friends, you're at a cinema and the name is on the big screen in neon. What colour is it? In neon. It's yeah. green. That tells me it's a male. <laughs> yes, it is a male, that's the right. First... And it, by the way, his surname was green. That's why I said green. Anyway, go on. Um, his first name is no. His first, the first letter is D. It is D. And the last one, the last letter is N. Yes, it is an N. The middle letter is an R. <laughs> yes, it is an R. Um, is it like a five-letter word or six? Five, yeah, six five or six letters. Yeah. Um. Darren. It is indeed Darren. Ryland, that was amazing. Okay, so that was a really good performance and it was actually a really clear representation of what the trick is. Now, this fooled your mum because after we filmed this... She thought it was like a thing that you couldn't... Work. She thought that the envelope was see-through yeah. and she thought that's how it worked, um, which it's not. And that's your fault as the performer because you should have given me the envelope and told me to examine it and make sure I couldn't yeah, see through fault. it. So that was your fault. But it's very important that you guys know that the envelope can be any envelope. Um, how it works, I'm, obviously we can't give away the method. This is my new favourite wallet. This is your, well it's not a wallet, but it's your new favourite peak. Yeah, it's your new, new favourite peak. peak. Um, because you've used lots of peaks in the past. You've used the Telethought wallet, you've used the Shadow wallet, is you've used Nexus, I think it's Telethought. Um, the John Cornelius one, you the, with the light, and you, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, this is my favourite. This is your favourite, isn't it? Here's the, let me, uh, well, I'm going to ask you some questions about it, because you did it, but first of all, let me just say one thing about this. Um, you get in here an envelope, but as I say, any envelope can be used. You also get a supply of the gimmicks. I can't really show you what the gimmicks are, but you get a supply of gimmicks. I think you get about 50 or 60 gimmicks. You're going to use one gimmick, Per performance, and it's so going to last you about sixty performances. Yeah, and and then you have to get refills. I believe that refills including, are available, including. But if you just don't get refills, then it will last you sixty performances, including practice. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to need to practice it. More you you practiced about seven or eight of them before you got it down, didn't you? Um, the other thing that you need to bear in mind is, unlike a lot of peak devices. There is a small reset before you can do it again. So the cards that you get with this, uh, um, which about, aren't in here, are, there you go. These cards, they have to be used. These are the cards that have to be used for the peak. Now you can, he talks about how you can have business cards made uh, and tells you how to make the business cards and the dimensions and everything in order to be able to use a business card instead of this eye. Um, but you do get two business cards, don't you? you get, so you get two of these oh, cards yes. so that you can, uh, you know, you've got a spare, you only need one. In between each performance, it's going to be about a 15 to 20 second reset because yeah, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take the card, you're going to have to do something to it, you're going to have to put it back in the envelope. It's going to take about 20 seconds and then you're ready to go again, which is one of the reasons I'm not as keen on it because I know you, him and I had a bit of a discussion about this and I prefer the Shadow Wallet you prefer this, don't you? And I understand best why. Peak. It's a very clever method. Well, best peak, best peak, best peak. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you some questions about it. It is a very clever method. But I don't like the fact that you have to reset in between tables. Does you, it matter if you have to reset? 
Well, I, yeah, well, it depends on how busy the gig is that you're going to, really, I suppose. What about your gig that you're going to do with about seven or eight people? Well, then it won't be a problem, will it? With seven or eight people, it won't be an issue at all. <laughs> but if there's like a hundred people there and I've got an hour and a half to get around everybody, yes, it becomes an issue. Um, let me ask you a question. How easy is it to do? It's really easy. No, is it? I think it's really easy. You find a lot of stuff easy that's not actually that easy. It is relatively easy, but it's a very unique method. I've never seen anything like this before. I think it's really easy. You're not peeking the information on the card at any point. Um, you're not looking at the back of the cards at one point. The only time you look at the back of the card is when you give it to them. Yeah, but you, you say, sign this part. Yeah, you're not actually at any point getting the information you're off the looking, card. You're not looking at the information off the card. It's a very unique method. It's very, very different. Very um, at the end, uh, what, what he does on the download, which you can do if you want to, is as soon as that card's put inside the envelope, you can hold the hand out, put the envelope in their hand, cover it up with their hand, um, and, and then proceed to tell them the information. At the end, everything is examinable, kind of, the one thing that you need to understand, they can't... You just need to palm something. Yeah, no, no, but also, they can't look at that card after you've done the revelation, can you? No. You would have to basically take the envelope and the card and put it away. And I don't think people would want to see the card because the card was there just to write the information down on. You've then got that information. Why would they want to look if at that you, card if again? If they wanted to examine the envelope, you just need to palm something tiny off. Yeah, exactly. Which wouldn't take very it's much like, effort it, at all. It's, a, it's like this. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's about, it's about the... It's lesser than... The, it's about half of the size of my hand. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to put the envelope away, there's no palming. You literally just take the card, put it inside the envelope, show the envelope, put it away in your pocket, and you've got all the information that you need immediately. Like, you know, immediately, you've got the information. It is a very unique method. It is a very different method. It would work in the real world. You don't need a table. You can do it mix and mingle. As I say, my one issue is... Better than candy. My, my one issue is it's a reset that you need to consider. And also, you're going through these little gimmicks. So after 60 or 70 performances, or however many it is, you need to buy some refills. Now, that therein yeah, for me 60. yeah but dude Ten think about 20. think about right okay think about think about think about the shadow wallet right i don't have to reset anything i just put the card inside the shadow wallet i put it away yeah, i've got yeah. the information at the end i give them the card back they can keep the card it's not like this where i can't give them the card back i can give them the card i can also use uh, my own business cards without having to have some extra special cards printed up and also as well so it's examinable at the end the shadow wallet is examinable at the end and i don't have a reset in between tables i can just literally put the wallet away in my pocket when i want to do it at the next table i just take the shadow wallet out and i do it again that's the i agree with you there are a lot of advantages over the Shadow Wallet. I think the reason you like this is because it's a really clever, different method. It's unlike anything that you've seen before. And it is really cool. It almost feels very James Bond, doesn't it? It's kind of a case of, right, okay. It's, it's, it, the way that you get the information is very clever. I didn't think it would work. When I was watching it, I was like, this ain't going to work. And then I showed it you, and you were like, actually, that does work really well. And then you showed it to your mom, and she was completely fooled. Um, Nothing fools her. Hmm? Nothing fools her. This fool Um So yeah, I really like it. I, I do like it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give it 75%. 75. Because I'm not going to do it right. I'm going to stick to my shadow wallet. I'm going to stick... I'm going to stick shadow wallet now. You just said that this is your new favourite <laughs> cookie. You don't have to change your mind just because I like you it one particular way. Agree. I made you agree. Yeah. Um, it, but I don't want 79%. people... 79%. I don't want people to think it's not practical. It is practical. If you were doing like a parlour show and you wanted a really clever way of peeking some information and you can get anything on there, you can get them to draw a, ha, a draw something and do a drawing duplication, you, whatever it is. If you've got a thing where, you, where reset isn't an issue and you want to do this as a one-off, this is great. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. Um, you're doing a gig with seven, seven and eight people. Right. Huh? Um, do this. Yeah, I might do. I might do. I think it's really good. I don't want people to think it's not good. It is good. Well, you got to give it eighty-one if you're still gonna do it. But I don't know whether I'm gonna do it. I think I probably. I think I get to the point where I go to the gig, and I just take my shadow wallet because it's easier to do. Yeah, that was shadow. Um, so I'm gonna stick to the shadow wallet. I'm gonna give this. Shadow I'm gonna give wallet. this. Shadow. 
Okay, okay can you shut up for a minute? I'm going to give this 75%. What are you giving it? Mm, 81. 81. So you are going to do it? Um, once. Once? What do you mean once? Once at a random gig with barely any people. You're going to go to a bed. <laughs> You're gonna go to a random gig, barely any people. You're gonna like do it you're once. Gonna, like you're gonna do when you're I don't, seven to eight. You know what? I think this would be a really good trick for you to do on a review show revisited. Review show revisited. You can go and do this. You can go and do this at a gig. See what the reactions like that you get, and uh, and 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 see if that changes the grade. For now, seventy-five percent from me, eighty-one percent from him. It's good, but in my opinion, there's better ways of doing it. Okay, so the final trick we are looking at is this. Fisher's Dream. Fisher's Dream by uh, Verne Magic. And it's... Oh, I don't think I'm going to pronounce that. Mm. Inaki Zabaleta. I'm going to go with that. Inaki Zabaleta. Uh, it's called, uh, like Rylan said, Fisher's Dream. And it is the signed card lasso. So... It's, yeah, it's, the, it's based on the lasso trick. Um, which has been around for a very, very long time. Yeah. It's their version of it. Um, one of the things that makes this different is it is a signed card. Um, and it is very fooling. It's a really nice it visual. It fooled me. It did fool you. It's a really nice visual because when you have the rope and you just dip the rope in there and then you come out and, and, and you've lassoed their signed card... It's an incredible moment. It really is. It looks so visual, but it's also very, very easy to do, um, which is really cool. So I'm going to do a full performance of this, first of all, just let you guys see exactly how this works. Um, the, the download that comes with this is about 15, 20 minutes long, which is all it needs to be. And uh, they, there's a full live performance of this done in like a parlor stroke small cabaret show setting. And I do think this is best for parlor or cabaret. Having said that, there's no reason why this wouldn't work in a close up environment. And I think this would work really nice on a big table. So if you're doing a big table type trip to absolutely everybody, I think this would work really well. But let's have a look at the performance of it. So we'll we'll have a look at performance yes. and then we'll we'll talk about what we think. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, I've got a few things here. I've got a deck of cards that you've just shuffled uh, before the camera started, so we're okay with that, yeah? yeah. Uh, I also have a bag. We'll get back to that in a minute. Put that in front of you. And we have a rope. Do you want to just check the rope out? Make sure the rope's okay. Make sure there's no wires, magnets, trapdoors, secret compartments. Make sure it is what it appears to be, a regular rope. Is that good? Yes? Yeah. Good stuff. May I take the rope back? Thank you very much. So we have a rope, and as well as the rope, which I will put around my neck for a minute. There we go. As well as the rope, we have cards, a deck of cards, and we bag have the bag. In a box. And a box. Now, you're going to uh, grab a card, so take any card that you want to. Are you happy with that card, or would you like to put it back and get a different one? Yeah, I'm happy with it. Okay, show the camera, don't show me. I'm going to give you a pen, and what you're going to do is you're going to take this pen, and you're going to write your name on the face of the card. Not on the back, on the face, not on your face, on the face of the card. Write your name, big letters. Okay, then perhaps put the card on my hand so I can't see it. Now, if I could tell you the name of that card, would that be good? Yeah. I want you to see that there's no marks on this card. It's not like you can see from that side, okay? It's completely, there's no marks or anything like that. So now I can tell you that uh, the card that you picked was the Two of Diamonds. Yeah, I saw you do this. Oh, did you, did you, did you, did you spot the glimpse? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not about knowing what your card is. But the important thing is that you understand that even if there are a million Two of Diamonds in the deck, this is the only one with your name written on it. So it's unique. Uh, unless you've got a habit of signing your name on various different cards, which actually you do have. So there might be another two of diamonds there somewhere. Open up the bag. Make sure the bag's okay. Make sure that the bag is perfectly normal. Make sure there's no wires, no magnets, no trapdoors. Make sure there's no secret compartments. Make sure they are what they appear to be. Big Just bag. A big, it is a big bag. Is it okay? Like a lunch sort of bag. Yes. Okay, now the idea is really simple. I'm going to take the cards, uh, all the cards, and put them inside the bag. Uh, because I don't want you to say that I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. I just don't want you to say I'm going to cheat. So I'm thinking You're going by to cheat. Well if I do it like this, I mix the cards up like that. There's no way I can do any weird special shuffles or weird special cups. That that's fair, right? Yeah. In fact there's a hole appearing in the back, so I better not do this. Right. So somewhere in here is your card, right? Here's what we're gonna do. Do you like fishing, Ryland? I hate fishing. No. My dad used to make me go fishing. That's why I've never made you go fishing. My dad used to make me go fishing, and I was bored senseless, dude, because I was just sitting by the side of the canal, 
for like seven hours, bored senseless, dangling a rod into a into the canal, hoping to get a fish. And when you get it, you know what my dad did? He threw it back in the thing. Like, what's the point? I used to say to him, what's the point? What's the point of sitting there catching a fish if you're going to throw it back in? I hate, I hate fishing. However, I can use this rope to do some magical fishing. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Somewhere in here is your card. And we're going to try and do something here. Watch, I'm going to... I'm gonna go fishing, see if I can get a, see if we can get a, a bite. See if we can get a bite, hang on a minute, how, how have I done? You're not gonna believe this. What? You're not gonna believe this. The rope has got one card, and one card only. One single card, Ryland. Is that your two of diamonds? Yeah! Look at that, what an amazing educated rope from there. By magic, that's the two of diamonds, that's the bag, that's the cards, that's the trick, that's magic. That was a good performance. Thank, oh, thank you. I, re, I, re, I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Can I ask you some questions? He's got some questions for me. Go on, go on. Um, is it easy? Is it easy? Yes. Um, the way that I did it on camera, I had the gimmick already set up in the deck because that was just an easier way to do it. And, and to be honest, if I was doing this on stage, I'd probably have the gimmick set up in the deck as well. And they've got this really nice way of introducing the gimmick in there. They've got the gimmick held out in the back. So once they've gone through the whole selection procedure, as the card is being signed, uh, you bring out the bag and that's when you steal the gimmick into the deck. Uh, I don't see a problem with having the gimmick preset in the deck from the very beginning, to be perfectly honest. Um, but th the reason I'm bringing that up is from an ease point of view, um, the only thing that's a little bit tricky is stealing that gimmick onto the deck, if that makes yeah. sense. If the gimmick's already there, there's nothing really there that's difficult at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, the actual lasso is self-working because the gimmick does the work for you. Um, the shuffling inside the bag is self-working. Um, the cleanup at the end does require you to hold, uh, does require you to do something that's a little bit sleight of handy, but it's not that difficult at all. Okay, you got any other questions? Um, could you do it on stage? Well, yeah, like I said to you, I think that I think stage and parlour is the best place Walk for around. this to be done. Yes, everywhere, could you do it everywhere? You could do it everywhere because there's not could that. You? Hang on, let me answer the questions before we ask another one. There's not that many props to carry around with you. The rope is ungimmicked, so you can hand the rope out for examination. You can have the bag in your in your like your pocket somewhere and you can bring the bag out at any point that you want it you can have the gimmick already t uh, set up in the deck so there's no table that's required so technically you could do this walk around and it it, it unlike the credit card trick that we talked about earlier on this would stand up to extreme close-up audiences there's nothing to see so yeah absolutely you could do this mix and mingle you could do this table magic you could do this a walk around you could do this in a kid's show i personally think the best place to use this is in a parlor show or a stage show but you can do it anywhere you can do it absolutely anywhere you have got any other questions uh... you asked me earlier on about the angles oh yeah what the angles like um once the gimmick is set up in the deck you want to make sure that that deck remains in your hand uh, you don't want to but be. But you're putting it in the bag and letting it. Yeah, down. it will. As soon as yeah, as soon as you put them in the bag, you're absolutely golden. But until you put them in the bag, you want to make sure that the gimmick. You don't want to be holding the deck like this or anything like this. As long as you're holding the deck in your hand and then you go straight into the bag, then there's not really any angles problems to uh, to to consider. Um, look right. I mean, ultimately, it's a really good trick. I was kind of a little bit confused when I was watching the performance how they could do that with a signed card. I understood how they could do it with a uh, force card, but doing it with a signed card didn't make any sense at all. Having now watched how they do it, it is very, very clever. And everything is justified. And I think that's really important. Everything is justified from a uh, routining point of view. So every move that you make or everything that you need to do is justified. As I say, if you use their method to ring the deck in, uh, sorry, ring the gimmick in, that's a perfect example. They've picked a card, you give them a pen to sign the card, you then introduce the bag, you, 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 you grab the gimmick, you give the bag to someone to hold on to, you take the card back, you get them to examine the bag. That's, it's all really nicely routine and you can tell that the person that's created this has thought it through 
And what you have here presented to you is everything that you need so that within an hour, you can do a five minute trick in front of everybody that will work really well. And I've talked about this on the channel before, but we'll mention it again. One thing that a lot of people are wanting to do at the moment, a lot of close-up performers are wanting to move into stage. I know this from seeing the comments on the channel. And I'm seeing a lot of people doing um, sort of close-up gigs like a wedding, and then they're offering a 15-minute stand-up set at the end of the close-up performance to maybe practice their stand-up show, right? And, and you need a, a, a show that packs small and plays big. This, packs small and plays big. It is, in essence, a piece of rope and a deck of cards and a bag. It packs small, but on stage, that moment where you lasso that signed card out and you bring it out, that's a really big moment. It'll play to a big audience. It's the perfect trick to put into a smaller stand-up show. It's the perfect trick to do on a head table for a VIP or that corporate client that's really important or um, the bride and groom at a wedding. It's just really good. So yeah, I'm going to give this um, 95%. What about you? Mm, same. 95% from you as well. 95%. If you like the performance, that's a very clear representation of what the trick's all about. If you want to lasso a signed card from a brown paper bag with a rope, then this is the way to do it. I think this is probably the best method for this trick that I've ever seen. 95%. Highly recommended. And that's another review show in the back. That's another review show in the back. Shut up. And that's another review show in the back. <laughs> yes, it is another review show in the back. Guys, thank you once again for joining us on the Craig and Ryland Review Show. Really appreciate it. If you want to see more from this kid, then very simply, he would really appreciate it if you go and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Ryland's YouTube channel is Ryland the Kid Magician. If you just go and search for Ryland the Kid Magician, you will find his YouTube channel. Subscribe to him. Don't forget myself and Ryland are here every Wednesday doing the Craig and Ryland Review Show. And we're here on a Friday doing the Review Show Revisited where we take the tricks in the real world and yeah. see what we think of them. If you want to see more videos like this, like, why have you got that? I like it. Fair enough. If you want to see more videos like that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow on Thursday with the magic stuff at nine o'clock, two o'clock got short, six o'clock got alive. Thank you very much for joining us here on Magic TV. Right, what you got to say to everyone? Thank you for watching. Thank you for that. You're a, you're a boy of very few words, aren't you? Thank you. Thank you for watching. Guys, we'll be back again next Wednesday. Thank Thanks you for watching it all this way. Thank you for watching it all this way. There you go. That, that made it so much better. I'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks very much. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. Take care. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.